All right, we're going to talk about one of the most common complaints I hear from women about men is that their inability to open up emotionally or worse, not even know where they stand in a relationship. Now, I recognize that you have a lot of frustration when it comes to men, and I can go on and on about telling you how men or how little boys are told to stuff their emotions and stuff their feelings, and we're taught to practically repress our feelings. And so it makes natural sense that this might be a reason why most men might seem like they're emotionally unavailable, maybe emotionally constipated, or as I said, worse, you might not know where you stand in a relationship. And there's a lot of frustration there. At the same time, I want you to know that men are absolutely capable of feeling their feelings, and they're certainly capable of emoting their feelings when the circumstances are right. And we're going to lean into that conversation in a little bit. Now, I want you to know that some of the frustrations in relationship is because most couples aren't really connecting at an emotional level. They're not connecting at an intimate level because they were never taught how to really connect from a heart-centered place. I'm repeat that. Most couples haven't really learned how to connect at a heart-centered place. I'm talking about that moment when you're just looking in your partner's eyes and you can just practically see into their soul. And I'm not talking about the early stage of dating where you might be experiencing lust or limerence, where the chemicals are being released from your brain to your body saying, I want this person, because that's really oftentimes the biological chemical drive you might be experiencing. I'm talking about something deeper. I'm talking about that space where you really connect at an emotional level, where you experience emotional intimacy. Why is this important? Because I said a moment ago, most people haven't been educated on this. And ladies, I know you have a capacity to emote your feelings. I know you have the capacity to talk about your feelings. But have you really stepped into real emotional intimacy? What does that feel like? I'm not talking about with a man. I'm talking about within yourself. This is why I continually recommend the book Emotional Intimacy by Robert Masters. Here is a book to really tap into your intimate side of who you are, because if you want to connect with a man on an emotional level, if you really want to get him to open up, it requires starting from the inside out. And I know you all think you're good at this, but I can tell you as a man who's been out in the dating world, I've witnessed this over and over again. Most women don't really know how to express their feelings in a way that's seen, heard, and understood. That's right. In fact, most women have duct tape over their mouth when they're in a relationship. They're afraid to speak their feelings. And I want you to hold one second so I can illustrate this point. This is how most of you operate in relationship. It's like this. It's like this. And I'm saying this not to piss you off. I'm saying this because you're oftentimes afraid to speak up because you're afraid that the person is going to end the relationship with you. And I'm here to say, here to say, if you speak your truth and you do it in a kind place, if you speak from your heart and it's sincere and from the heart, you can't say the wrong thing to the right person. In fact, that's your place to actually connect at a deeper emotional level. This is why I'm so tired of the dating rhetoric that's pits men against women. Because if you really want to connect at a heart-centered level, I highly recommend reading this book. It's called If the Buddha Dated. The Buddha Dated. Why is this a great book? It throws out the bullshit gender rhetoric of how, how dating has been throughout whatever long dating has been. And by the way, dating is a relatively new phenomena. You know, it used to be people mated and married in less than two months. Think about that. Literally. Well, let's go back to caveman days. There was no dating. There was a lot of mating, but there was no dating, okay? <laughs> and really, up until about 50 years ago, the, the courtship process was literally a nanosecond, and people committed to one another. And when they committed to one another, they felt safe enough to actually lean into potentially deeper intimacy. And I say potentially because the, re the reality is, is most humans live life from a survival-based way. 
you know, they made it together because they were in survival mode. We are actually in the first time, and especially from a woman's perspective, where you don't need a man to actually take care of you. You have a capacity to take care of yourself. So you actually get to choose who your partner is, not based on their wallet. Although I'm sure you all like somebody with a big wallet. <laughs> I know I'd like a woman with a big wallet, uh, <laughs> if I'm being candid. Why I'm saying this is it's, it's incumbent to understand that emotional intimacy for men usually stems from a woman connecting with her heart to connect with our heart. I repeat that. It, and I mean, I'm really being sincere here. When a woman can connect with her part in an empowered way, she has a capacity to get a man to open up his heart. So in a moment, I'm going to share with you about a half a dozen ways to connect to a man's heart, to get him up, get him to open up emotionally and talk with you. So before I do, I want to address something that John Gottman talks about or the, the Gottmans talk about. And that is what's known as the four horsemen of the apocalypse. And what I mean to say is in relationship, these are the four relationship killers. And oftentimes this causes men and women not to open up in relationship. And the four horsemen are contempt, criticism, stonewalling, and defensiveness. I'll repeat that. Contempt, criticism, stonewalling, and defensiveness. Defensivism. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> anyway. Why is that important to know? Because oftentimes communication these days comes from a confrontational way and not a conversational, curious place. I want to repeat that. This is really important. A lot of men and women have combative communication instead of real heart-centered communication. This is why I continually recommend the book, Nonviolent Communication by Marshall Rosenberg. And why this amazing book is because it teaches you how to communicate at a deeper level coming from your heart. And by the way, this should have been titled Compassionate Communication. I really wish that was it, but why is it called nonviolent? The violent is because there's either contempt, criticism, defensiveness going on. And the stonewalling means just cutting off communication. Kind of what I experienced growing up with my mom, but that's another conversation. So what's it going to take? What are you going to have to do to get a man to open up to you emotionally? First is tap into your emotional heart, your emotional center, and come at it from a true empowered place. This is why I continually recommend the book, Why Men Love Bitches. And bitch stands for babe in total control of herself, ES. And what that means is she's not wearing the duct tape on her mouth. She's got that capacity to speak up. And we're going to talk about how to speak up in a way that actually helps you connect with a man at a heart-centered level. And I'm going to recommend one amazing book that will change your life. And if you're in a relationship right now and you really want to connect at a deeper level, then I'm definitely recommending that you purchase this book. So I'll do that in a moment. So let's pull up my trusty notes. There you can see it. Bum, bum, bum. All right. I started this conversation with the understanding that this is all about you leading by example, leading by example. Be as open as possible because your fear of losing a guy is one of the reasons why he's not able to open up because you have walls and your walls isn't going to make him feel safe to open up. So lead by example, be open in your heart. What does that look like? That looks like honest communication. That looks like radical honesty. That's compassionate communication. All of this work prepares you for actually being in a in a, play, a centered space to be able to communicate and lead by example. Now, does that mean all men are capable of this? No, a lot of men are deeply, deeply wounded. Most of you know my emotional maturity relationship skills chart. I'm putting this up here. By the way, this is not a fact. This is merely opinion. 20% of the population, men and women alike, have clinical issues. They have real deep-seated clinical issues. And why I say 20% are healthy, I'm being rather generous with that number. Most human beings are dysfunctional, just like you and just like me. It's taken me years to be able to get to a capacity to speak to you in a, in a heart-centered space. This took a lot of work. 
and I'm still radically dysfunctional. Ask my girlfriend about it. She calls me complicated, but that's a whole nother conversation. Anyway, um, so why am I leaning into this? It starts from within. And when you're able to emote in a more heart-centered space, you lead by example, you come from an open heart, it invites him to open up. I had a dear friend who was very closed off emotionally, and he was in relationship with a woman who just continually expressed her feelings, her desires, what she wants, and she was extracting it from him. And because he genuinely cared about her, he didn't run away. He didn't ghost. He didn't disappear. He cared about her. It, she led by example and gave him an opportunity to express himself. And he learned that he has a capacity much greater than he ever had because he was with a woman who allowed space to open up his feelings. So that's number one. Number two, I want you to practice active listening, active listening, and validate what someone says. You know, today most people are talking and then they're waiting to talk and then they're talking and that person's waiting to talk. They're talking at each other. They're not actually listening to one another. And active listening is like basically saying, you know, I mean, it could look like something like this. It could say, could be, you know, is this what you just told me? You, you, you literally repeat back what they say as a way to demonstrate that you're actively listening. And I got to tell you, men and women alike are terrible at this. That's why I say most humans are dysfunctional. And if you want to have that relationship where you truly connect at a heart-centered level where you can actually, I mean, just look at your partner's eyes and just feel into their soul. It's going to require doing some work. There's going to be requiring to heal childhood wounds and traumas and adult traumas and, and going to the places I recommend like uh, the Hoffman process or Insight or LifeSpring to just name a few places to go back and heal what's blocking so many of you and so many men as well. Hey, listen, I recognize, you, you know, this might sound like, well, Jonathan, this is going on deaf ears because guys don't do the work. I get it. I get it. But you can start very early on. Listen, if his penis gets to go inside your vagina, you have every right to speak up. You have every right to ask questions. Don't be so fucking naive that thinking sex is going to lead to a long-term relationship because chemistry is not the indicator of relationship success. If you are not familiar with my relationship iceberg, here it is. You can see at the top of the iceberg is attraction. It says chemistry. But below the iceberg is shared values, blendable lifestyles, and emotional intimacy, maturity. Deep emotional, I mean, here's the bottom line. You either want a relationship where you're connecting at a heart-centered level, heart level, or you want a relationship that's merely for, for practical persons. And by the way, I recognize a lot of people, especially during COVID, chose relationships out of convenience. They chose relationships because you're able to connect with someone. Well, listen, the floodgates are open. The masks are off. You actually now have an opportunity to really tap into what you want in your life. And this is why I recommend all these books. This is why I continually scream at the top of my lungs. And I want to read you a meme um, as to illustrate this. Because get busy living or get busy dying. And, and by the way, here's a meme that I love. It's called Ways to Build Emotional Intimacy. Now, I'm going to read it because it's fuzzy right now. Do meaningful activities together. Be intentional about conversations. Offer thoughtful gestures. Provide emotional support. Share thoughts and feelings. Practice non-judgment listening. Apologize when wrong. Be curious. Validate their experiences. Face conflict with empathy and openness. Offer non-physical compliments, although we Leos definitely like compliments on our looks. Practice vulnerability. Try something new together. Be honest and assertive and give space. I love this meme because it's really, look it. We can have relationships, like I said before, that's convenience. You can spend time with someone where you have companionship, connection, and sex. I'm here to encourage something deeper for every one of you. I'm encouraging you all to really connect at a more heart-centered level. So I want to share a few more examples. 
and then we're going to move on to questions. So here's another thing. Ask questions. Ask questions and ask his opinion. I've shared this story before, and I'm going to share it again. I'll never forget. I was on a second date with a woman. I picked her up at her home. And um, and we had already built, a, we'd actually been speaking for quite a while. So we built a pretty good friendship with one another. By the time I picked her up at her, or met her at her home, she showed me around her place, gorgeous home. She was doing remodeling and she wanted to show me some tiles that um, she was thinking about putting in her kitchen. And she said, Jonathan, I'd like to get your opinion on these tiles. What do you think would look good? Now, whether she was going to listen to my advice or not, I felt so respected in that moment. She said, I want to know your opinion. I want to know what you're thinking. I want to know how you feel about this. That's a, that, that, that was like, you know, like the peacock feathers puffed up, you know, and men appreciate when you ask their opinion, they actually appreciate you asking questions for men that actually want to go deeper into relationship. Look, I get it. You can meet a lot of guys that are, you know, stonewalling you. I get it. But you want, and by the way, one of the things I teach in my private coaching, and by the way, there's a link below in the description to get a free discovery call with me, is teaching you radical honesty to vet for the emotionally mature men who are capable of going deeper versus the ones that are not. So if you want some support with that, that's my area of expertise. So you're not wasting time, months, years with the wrong guy. Let's focus on how to pick the right guy very early on. So again, check out the link below. Again, ask questions, ask his opinion. Number four, this is one I made up because I noticed something earlier today with my girlfriend. We were driving in the car. We were just talking with to one another. And I just realized how much I enjoy that conversation in the car. You know, oftentimes we're so hung up on spending our relationship time on these devices. And just that simple talking in the car felt intimate. And I'm just invite you to start thinking of new different ways to connect with your partner. And this is why I said I want to share another book with you before I give you the last two suggestions or the last three suggestions before we move on. This is an amazing book. It's called I Hear You, The Surprisingly Simple Skills Behind Extraordinary Relationships. This book will teach you the communication skills. This is all designed to teach you the communication skills so you can actually help a man, the man, a man you're with is emote his emotions. And let me just say this. Men are absolutely capable of this. I'm, I'm, matter of fact, I was at the jacuzzi the other night. I was talking to a young couple. And what fascinated me, uh, his girlfriend is from, uh, I think, the Ukraine or something like that. And, and I asked a question about who's the emotional one in the relationship. And she pointed at him. Like, there are men capable. They, I mean, they're app, and there are men already doing it. I just want to help you find those guys, okay? But also, I'm giving you the tips to make it happen right from the get-go. So check out this book, I Hear You. It's an extraordinary book to really help you both connect at a heart-centered level. Okay, number five, learn his love language. If you're not familiar with the book, The Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman, I highly recommend reading that book. Words of affirmation. And once again, if you're with a Leo, it's words of adoration, okay? Uh, physical touch, quality time, acts of service and gifts. Learn this book. It is going to help you really connect at an emotional level with your guy. When you understand his love language, you'll understand how he's communicating with you. And you can simply start to express or emote what your love language is. Because when you understand your partner's love language, you're now connecting at a more heart-centered level. And the last two, this is my second to last one, it's my favorite. I call it the art of hanging out. You know, oftentimes the dating process is all this parade of taking out to dinners and do stuff. But I got to tell you something. One of the best things to do with someone is just to hang out and just connect just communicate with one another. You talk, it's not about talking about your day. How's your day going? Did you have a good day? I hope you had a good day. You talk about your feelings. How are you feeling about this relationship? I'm here to say, lay your cards on the table fucking right from the get-go. We've got to stop this drawn out way of dating. 
and actually condense it because you don't have time to fuck around with the wrong person. I'm here to say accelerate the process instead of dragging it out. But I need time to get to know. You know how you get to know someone? You lay your cards on the table right from the get-go. But Jonathan, all the other dating coaches say don't do that because that's an interrogation. You want to interrogate the motherfucker. I'm telling you. That's what you want to do because you want to weed out the wrong guys quickly. I know that might seem counterintuitive, but these days we have to be more strategic, more intentional. This is why it's called radical honesty, because it's starting from here, from the heart, and just laying your cards on the table with someone. Look, you're not going to do this on the first date. I'm, I'm saying when you guys are horny enough to have sex with one another, that's the time to instigate radical honesty. And certainly that's the time to instigate my dating vows, which I'll have the dating vows will be listed in the description below. And number seven, and lastly, the most important way to help a man connect with his heart is gratitude, is gratitude. Attention, affection, appreciation, acceptance, being in a state of gratitude with your partner when you can actually, and when I say partner, a man you're dating too as well, is be in that space. And by the way, I, I don't like the words thank you. You know why? Because we say thank you to the grocery store clerk. We say thank you to random people. I prefer using the word grateful and appreciation. You know, I really appreciated that you went down and got me the orange juice at the store. I really appreciated that you took time to get me something, whatever it is. Just say the words appreciation. That's a powerful word. And more importantly, and I cannot stress this enough, is to learn to express gratitude with one another. Begin a practice of simply saying three or four things that you're grateful for about your partner. Invite them to do the same. Look, I know you're going to feel like you're going to get resistance. You're probably with some men that you're already feeling this resistance. That's okay. Sometimes you have to be persistent. You know, a diamond doesn't happen overnight. A diamond happens through pressure. Okay, it's coal squeezed with pressure. Well, guess what? If you want to squeeze an emotional man who's communicative with you, then you're going to have to, and I use the word pressure. I don't mean in an unkind, loving way. I'm talking about squeezing it out of him by leading by example, as I stated in the beginning of this conversation. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know. Ah. All right. I laid my cards on the table. I'd like to hear yours, okay? So uh, this wraps up the content portion of this video. Now we're going to move to Q&A. And those who know my Q&A structure, it's really simple. If you have a question to ask of me, simply write the word question, then post the question thereafter, or you can purchase a super sticker, super chat. All the monies from the super sticker, super chat, or super thanks goes to a scholarship fund in the name of my son, Connor Asley. That's him with his with my mom. They're both in heaven right now. Um, the scholarship fund is in, in, in his name is to help uh, uh, causes like the Hoffman process and insight seminars and, though, and to defray the cost of personal development work for those in need. So I'm definitely I definitely would appreciate if you would support the cause by purchasing a super sticker or super chat. All right, we're time to ask questions. Let's see what we've got here. Mm. All right, Marta. Let's see. Question. I found my guy a month ago, and I'm surprised how many triggers are coming to the surface. Are you experiencing that in your new relationship? Actually, I had an interesting trigger today. What happened? Uh, God, what happened? There was something when I was getting out of the car. It was a simple thing. I can't remember what it was. So I'm going to say to you, I'm going to answer the question this way. I don't think I've ever felt connection like this before. I, I really, I know for a fact, I've never felt connection like this before. I've never experienced um, a relationship where I really just, I, I just dig this person. I mean, my, my, I just want to pour my heart out in this person. And, and more importantly is I can feel it from her. And I will say recently I got scared because my, 
So there's a picture of my mom and dad. And um, my mom did her best to be a good mom. And she was a very loving mom. And at the same time, she had a capacity to give love and pull it away and give love and pull it away and give love and pull it away. I mean, literally, I, I want you to imagine this growing up as a child, habitually having love taken away, given love taken away. And after a while, I didn't realize I couldn't trust love. So here I'm experiencing someone who's absolutely pouring her heart to me in this kind, loving way, not so much in her words, it's just her presence and her words, but this, there's just this energetic presence. And it freaked me out because for a moment, I was afraid she'll pull it away, just like my mom did. And, and I shared that with her. And those are uncomfortable things to share. And I, I'm not suggesting it was a trigger per se. It was a trigger in the sense of, you know, we often, many of us have experienced the same thing. And what I appreciate most is we've already began a relationship of radical honesty. We began a relationship of laying our cards on the table. That's one of the benefits of long distance relationship. Now, in our particular case, we are spending a significant amount of time together because we, we're blessed. We have a flexible lifestyle with one another. Um, our dynamic fits really well together. But coming back to your question about trigger, yeah, I've had multiple triggers. And you know what? I've shared it with her. So here's what I invite you to do. When you get triggered with a man, share the trigger with your guy. Share what's coming up for you. Now, more importantly, it's best if you know where the trigger began. Like in my case, I've done fucking a shitload. I mean, listen, if you haven't done the Hoffman process, check out the book, The Hoffman Process. This is a deep dive into healing your mom and dad shit, okay? And I've spent, I've spent a lot of hours finding out where all my triggers began. And so when I could share it with her, it wasn't pointing the finger at her not that there was anything to point, by the way. I'm just sharing what came up. So here's an opportunity. When you share from a heart center place with a man, it's actually an invitation for deeper intimacy. What is intimacy? Into me you see. And if you want that deeper connection, it's going to require opening up. And men aren't really good at this. I just happen to practice this shit. Okay? I'm a unicorn in that way. And there are plenty of men who are absolutely capable of leaning into their emotions and their feelings. I mean this sincerely. Most men are good guys. They just need a little help along the way. Now, is it going to work on every man? No. But you certainly start with somebody. That's my invitation for you. Thank you so much for that question. I really appreciate it. All right. I noticed a super sticker. Hey, Roller Girl, thank you for the Connor Club. I really appreciate that. All right, let's go swimming. Let's go swimming. Let's see. Or is it just keep swimming? Question, do you think you are complicated? If so, why? <laughs> Kimberly, you crack me up. So I'm complicated because I process everything. I'm so fucking analytical. I drive myself nuts. I absolutely drive myself nuts. So it's no wonder. You know, I I'll share with you. My girlfriend said to me early on, you're exhausting. You try to figure out every nook and cranny. But at the same time, I think just like Sally in When Harry Met Sally, she was neurotic. But, you know, at the end of the movie, he says, I love it that it took it takes you an hour and a half to order a ham sandwich. I love it that you think 71 degrees is cold. I love it that you're the first person I, I think of when I wake up in the morning and the last person I go to bed. He fell in love with their neuroses. And my hope is, just like I'm learning to appreciate some of hers, is that she appreciates it. Because it's also, it's not a character flaw. It created the opportunity to create deeper intimacy with one another. She also says she likes my woo-woo-ness, so, <laughs> which I really appreciate. All right, Kimberly, thanks for that sweet question. I appreciate it. Oh my gosh, it's all about my relationship today. Jonathan, how's your relationship going? I live vicariously through you. You know, guys, or ladies, I should say, 
you know, I think I, I really believe it's rare that two souls connect with such open hearts. And what I appreciate most about her, and I'm sharing this with you, everyone, is her heart is wide open. And she's just easy and chill. So many of us have had walls up. We've had been guarded after, because of pain after pain after pain. It's difficult. It's, I want you to think about this. How do you connect with someone's heart if you're wearing armor? And I understand why the armor is there. In fact, you all know I lost a child. When I lost Connor, that broke my heart open because I had a choice. I could grieve with suffering or I could grieve with love. I said I had this choice because I wanted to make that choice because I know that's what he'd want for me. And so the armor began little by little dissipating. This is why, listen, I recommend my book. I know it sounds like a sales pitch, but I recommend my book because it's a journey of personal development, self-help and spiritual work. It's the journey I got to a place where I could open my heart up. And so when I was feeling this little bit of fear and resistance for a moment, it didn't, it doesn't keep me stuck. And yet so many men and so many women are carrying so much pain. And I invite you to let it all go. Just like my coffee mug says, sometimes you're awesome. Sometimes you forget you're awesome. This is your reminder. Get busy letting go of the armor because it doesn't serve you. Look it. If our relationship implodes, all right, so it happens. I mean, yeah, that's that might happen. But you know what does what happens more often? That the armor keeps two people from actually connecting at a heart-centered level. And I will tell you this, ladies, I didn't get to where I was at because a man or my father or anyone helped me. It took women, a woman and women to help me get to in this place. Because a man, listen, we men are very competitive with one another. We're oftentimes like this when we're communicating with one another. It takes a woman to pierce a man's veil. And you have this beautiful capacity to help us feel nurtured and trusted and safe. Excuse me, nurtured and safe. Because ultimately, a man's capacity to open up his heart, because he trusts you. Not trust in the fidelity sense, trust in the sense that you both are feeling that sense of this person has my best interests at heart. And I can share with you because this was asked, that's how I'm feeling in this relationship. It's like her best interests are in my best interest when she's, when I can help her in any capacity I can, it helps me. And that's my invitation for you all is to let go of the armor, to let go of it all. Because what do you got to lose? Do you want keeping the armor? What's the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. All right. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate it, Brenda. All right. Oh, we got another super sticker. I want to acknowledge uh, Cecilia. I'm grateful to be with you tonight. Thank you so much. Blessings to you. I really appreciate that. Big hugs to you. All right, let's keep swimming. Oh my gosh, we have lots of questions. I'm not going to be able to get to all of this. Cecilia says, how do you stay in high energy, enlightenment, peace, love, while you are empathizing in a relationship, anger, fear, and shame? That's a good one. How did I choose to grieve with love instead of suffering. How did I choose to do that? I think my motivator was, that's what Connor would want me to do. He would want me to live my life to the fullest. So he's my carrot, okay? He's my carrot. It's not easy. In fact, in a couple of days is going to be the anniversary, his four-year anniversary of passing. That's not going to be easy for me. But I know 
That's what he wants for me. And so I invite you all to find that carrot to make that choice because you can choose A, you can choose the red pill or the blue pill. You could choose pain or suffering or you can make the choice to love because a true miracle in life is the choice to choose Love, love for yourself, love for others. It really, you know, it really can be that simple. The walls and armor isn't going to allow that through. An open heart, as my friend Alan says, be totally open. I know that's scary, but believe it or not, when you're totally open, that's when it happens. I'm serious. I know that goes counterintuitive. You think, you know, it's like he must climb to the tallest tower in the, you know, like men have to climb in. But no, when you're just totally open, you create a space for him to be open as well. It's not going to work with every guy. I get it. That's why you have to hire me to figure out the ones that are worthy of you. That's my job. Check out the link to a free discovery call with me. Reading all these books are great resources to get you totally open. Going to workshops, going to the Hoffman process, going to Insight, going to LifeSpring. Go to Rhythmia in Costa Rica and do ayahuasca. Go to a divorce. Uh, there's this one lady. Oh, she teaches in Thailand. I know that's way out of your geographic zone. But there are so many places you can go to to break open your heart if you can't do it the way I did it. And that's my invitation for you. Thank you so much for that question. I really appreciate it. I hope I answered your question. Folks, you know me. I go off on tangents and I rattle up stuff. So thank you so much. Uh, Haley says, question, do you feel people are more, wait, do you feel people are way more open nowadays compared to our parents? Oh, absolutely. fucking lutely our listen my mom and dad this is when they're in their 20s this was back in 1950ish i mean the the couples back then was survival based relationships i mean they began we are now look at our big issue here in the united states and maybe across the world is we have a humongous mental health problem most humans are suffering from i'm not good enough i'm not lovable and i'm not likable this is why you got to get my book okay but we have an opportunity now to really work on our emotional side. Really, we have this opportunity, every one of you. And let me tell you something. What attracted me to her, one is she shared with me she did a lot of work. I really respect that. I really appreciate that because I felt like it was a preparation for us as well. But more importantly, she didn't have walls or armor based on, you know, feeling jaded or bitter about her last relationships. That's the number one reason why I'm going to say, I think that could be the number one reason why a lot of women don't attract the men that they want. I've gone on dates and I mean, I've gone on so many dates with women that literally I'm sitting across from them at the table. and I can see every man that hurt them standing behind, metaphorically speaking. So I invite you to ask yourself these three questions about every one of your past relationships. Ask yourself, what positive things did I learn about myself in this relationship? What was good about this relationship? And what am I most grateful for? This is an antidote to letting, go, letting down the armor, to letting down the bitterness, the jadedness that so many people have experienced. And it's no wonder because unlike my mom and dad, my mom had sex with one man in her life. OK, these days we've had multiple relationships, could have multiple sexual partners as well. I don't know if humans were designed for that. I don't know. I'm just maybe they are. Maybe they're not. Well, actually, we are designed uh, to have sex with people. Um, but I'm talking about an emotional level. And the more people we experience, you know, dating really triggers I shared with you a moment ago, the number one emotional health issue is I'm not good enough, I'm not lovable, and I'm not likable. And sadly, dating triggers this. But you know what is good about a trigger? A trigger is an opportunity to work on your shit. I mean, yes, I've had uh, earlier the question was I've had triggers, but it's an opportunity to work through my shit. You know, relationships aren't easy. Let me reframe that. 
when you're with the right person, it's easy. It really is when you're with the right person. Doesn't mean you're not going to work through your stuff. That you know, when someone says relationship is work, no, the work is yourself. It's not working on them and it's not pointing the finger at them and telling them what's wrong about them. What's really the opportunity to lean into yourself and say, how can I be a better person? How can I improve myself? And that's my invitation for all of you. So going back to your question, which I forgot what it was, uh, excuse me. Uh, yes, I think people are way more open than before. I look at my son. Where's Colin? Uh, there's Colin. There's a young man. He's younger there, but he's 26 years old. I can't tell you what an amazing human being this person is because he has a capacity. He has he has an open heart like, I, like I've never seen in an individual. I'm not saying that because he's my son. It's because he genuinely, I, I don't know what his mom did right. I don't know if I did it, but whatever his mom did right, he's got this big, gigantic open heart. Men have this capacity more than ever before. My girlfriend shares about her boys. I mean, they have this amazing capacity to love. These men exist. I want you to know that. I want to invite you to start saying it's raining great men. It's raining great, raining, ah, raining great men. Dear God, universe, spirit, I invite in a partner that I can connect with on an emotional level, that we have amazing communication with one another and our banter can go on for hours and hours at a time and that we can blend lives together and we can sh with, that we share the same values and that we'll build the deep roots of trust through social activities, hobbies, mutual interests, spending time with family and friends, traveling together, teamwork building skills, both in our personal and our professional life. And lastly, intimacy, both physical and emotional intimacy that helps us bond together. I invite that into my life right now. And that is my invitation for you all is to set that prayer and to let go down the walls to invite in a partner in your life. Because the walls are not allowing him to connect with your heart. And therefore, you won't be able to connect with his heart. Thank you so much. All right, we have another $5 super sticker. Thank you so much, Pam. I appreciate that. Oh, my gosh. Let's go swimming. Oh, we're going to got to give our props to Pam. Thank you so much. Again, if you want to support the Connor Owsley Scholarship Fund, purchase a super sticker, super chat. It's the dollar sign below. By the way, folks, is this resonating with you, what I'm saying? Is this, are you connecting with this? Does this hear, does this sound like a wah, 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 or is this, are you going to make a shift in your life? Because that's my invitation for you all. Ah, so thank you. All right. Let's see what we got here. Oh, Monarch Beat says, it's raining great men. Exactly. <laughs> all right. Question from Michelle. How do you make an attached avoidant, open up emotionally. Listen, if you're not familiar with the book Attached by Amir Levine and Rachel Heller, I highly recommend reading this book. This book has so many, so many uh, tools. God, it took me a second to come up with that word. The tools to actually help you communicate better with your partner. And then there's another amazing book by Barbara DeAngelis called How to Make Love All the Time. Oh my God, this is a great book to help an emotionally avoidant man actually start leaning into his heart. Again, I invite you to read this and learn this so you can actually be better schooled. So when you're facing these situations, you know exactly how to navigate it. Because here's the bottom line with guys. Men will never admit this. They really just want to be loved. They want to be accepted for who they are. They want to be loved for who they are. We live in a society, we live in a world that is constantly criticizing and constantly judging. And con I mean, we are divided here in the United States and it's red and blues and this and that. And it's no wonder it's a clusterfuck out there. And yet at the end of the day, men deeply want to be loved because every, within every man is a little kid that just wants to be loved because 
look at my mom did her best. My dad did their, her best, but my mom's capacity was give love, take it away. Give love, take it away. Give love, take it away. She didn't do that intentionally. And it's scary for us guys to lean into this. And yet at the same time, there are beautiful men out there that want to open up their hearts. And I'm just simply inviting you to let down the armor, the wall, so you can open your heart to deeper love. Because let me just say this. And I say this now with a tiny bit of knowing. I've had relationships before. My relationships were very much traditional. My marriage was traditional because I was told to go to college, get a job, meet a girl, get married, buy a house, start a family. That was the programming. And that relationship didn't work out. My next relationship, I'm an anxious attachment style. And I was ridiculously dysfunctional. What did I choose and avoid in the attachment style? I put this person up on a pedestal, but I was attached not from a, from a, from a place of empowerment. The real journey here to connect with someone starts with individual empowerment. That's why I spent the last five years learning to be in a position so I could be here right now to step into something that I didn't know existed. I'm a 50 plus year old guy that didn't know what it meant to really love someone at a heart centered level. And I'm just beginning to experience this now. Most of us haven't. Most of us had superficial relationships. And I didn't get here by the definition of insanity, meaning doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. I had to start from the inside out. And that's my invitation for every one of you. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know. All right. We're going to take one or two more questions before we wrap up. <laughs> Jennifer asked, do you think we're your, you and your girlfriend are twin flames? I don't know if I believe in twin flames, but I can tell you something. We are so fucking alike. I'm like, it's like down to the most ridiculous things. I mean, I, like right now they escape me in the moment, but I'm like, like, you like that too? I'm like, yeah, I'm like that. And it's like, I, I feel like there's this such alignment. That's why, listen, there's a book. You may not like the website eHarmony, but the guy who started eHarmony wrote a book called Two Dates or Less. He talks about when, when two people are aligned in the 25 areas of alignment he talks about, you literally are so aligned with one another that it is practically easy. This is why when I teach you my private coaching, I teach you a skill called a radical honesty, pre-qualifying your prospect, meaning it, your, job is, your job is to figure out, is this guy worthy of your vagina? And do this before. You, most of you wait months hoping that he's going to take the lead. And I'm here to say, you are in charge of your relationship destiny. Don't give it up to a guy. Figure out alignment because I don't know if we're twin flames, but I, I feel like we must. I, I really believe it. By the way, if you don't, if you have Netflix, watch Black Mirror season four an episode called Hang the DJ. Can someone write that in the chat box? Netflix, Black Mirror, season four, Hang the DJ. If you want to get a sense of what I think our relationship is like, it's that. Now, listen, you guys all know I'm in La La Land right now. I'm Tom Cruise dancing on the, on the couch with Oprah here. But I don't say this cavalierly. Look, I've had plenty of lust and limerence in my life. Limerence is extreme infatuation. And certainly I've lusted for women. This is not that. This is genuine heart connection. And so that is why I believe that there is a soul connection between us. And I do believe they exist. So watch that episode. Can someone write that in the chat? Again, Netflix, Black Mirror, season four, Hang the DJ. All right. You know what, folks? I think this will be a great place to wrap up. I've shared a lot of personal things I wasn't expecting to right now. Cecilia says, this is a great video, Jonathan. I'm adding it to my playlist. Thank you so much. I'm hoping, I'm hoping I've inspired you to shift the narrative. Because most guys, they deeply want to open up to emotional intimacy. They want their little kid loved. It's hard for us to do it on our own. 
And that's why I invite you to read these books, to do the work, try some of the examples I shared here in the beginning of this video, because you might be surprised. You might have a diamond in the rough right now. And all it takes is a little bit of squeezing, if you will. That's how a diamond is made. And who knows, you might find that you have a great guy with, your, with you right now, or you can be prepared now for when you do meet a great guy to actually live a more empowered, joyful, happy relationship with someone. And that's my invitation for everyone. All right, folks, I think this will be a great place to wrap up this video. Again, don't forget to purchase the Super Sticker Super Chat or Super Thanks if you are, appreciate this video and it had value for you. Don't forget that's for the Connor Asley Scholarship Fund. And I'm going to wrap up this video as I always do. First off, give myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Barrog of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera. Oh, my God, you saw my pit stains. Reach into the camera and give, my, give you a big, gigantic hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow, and give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. I want to thank Roller Girl and Susan and Celia and Jamie and uh, Brenda and, uh, oh God, I can't even pronounce your name, Ricka and Haley and Vanessa and Claire. Thank you all so much. Wishing you a super duper fabulous evening. Bye now.